Hi guys, this is Rob. Um, going, I'm going to try to use the uh, video here to submit uh, questions to the interview for the kindergarten position. Um, I apologize, it's a, not a great um, quality of video and I'm going to be reading the questions off my phone. So we've ended up with a very busy two weeks here um, in the Hornheimer's household as a uh, Mary and I returned from Iceland yesterday, and we are leaving tomorrow morning. Uh, Jill, Sophie, Colony, EJ, and I are going to Santa's Village in New Hampshire to celebrate Sophie's Sweet 16. It's something we had done as a family about 10 years ago, and we're going to surprise her with that as, a, um, as her Sweet 16 birthday party. So we're really excited. And then Friday morning, we're going on our annual camping trip to uh, Students Island and we'll be gone till Monday night so when I got back from Iceland I um, I saw the position and I, I really am um, inspired to um, talk to you about it I wish I could do it in person but instead I met in my grandfather's chair in my bedroom um, with the map EJ made in science he did a great job in my nice little lamp um, late at night unshaven and still a little jet lagged but um, I'll do my best. So thanks for, thanks for accepting the video, and I uh, look forward to doing my best to answer the questions. Um, I'll try not to ramble too much. Um, number one, what are you passionate about in education, and what, in your opinion, makes you a great candidate for this position? Um, my passion is uh, in the relationships that we foster with our kids, with our families, and with each other. Um, that's the heart of, um, of my work. It always has been, and I think it always will be. Um, and the relationships that uh, we form create the environment for the learning to happen. Um, I think the kindergarten team is really exciting. Um, to me, if, if I had to pick a team, um, to work with, it could very well be, a, you know, if I had my ideal choice, Mrs. Patton, Mrs. Greenleaf and Mrs. Cowan Young, um, it's just really exciting for me at this, at this point in my career to be thinking about, um, making a shift back to a more, uh, steady, um, location and uh, with with such a, a great group of people with whom um, you know we we all know each other and um, understand each other and I just when I think about uh, the four of us together as a team I I see us creating a really good year for each other and when that happens for each other it happens for the kids um, and that's just a blessing that uh, we can give each other in the course of a, a long, what is a long and hard school year. Um, I have really fond memories of teaching kindergarten, first grade with Jennifer um, 10, 12 years ago, something like that, and um, entering that world again of uh, working with five year olds is something that I have uh, just a fond um, memory of doing and something I'd like to do again. Question number two, our school mission is to develop the unique strengths of every learner for a lifetime of success. Tell us how this statement would be present in your work. Um, I think the way it'd be most present is in the word unique. Every child is truly unique. Um, and when we help them to know that we see them for who they are, we accept them for who they are, and we, um, we truly care for them uh, just as they are, not as we would like them to fit into a, a mold, um, then they are more present to the environment and they are more regulated uh, when they are seen and known. Um, and a lifetime of success is um, something that has become more evident the longer I stayed in the district because students come back and we can still help those students. Um, I helped a student graduate from 
high school, I don't think he would have graduated without my, um, my help this year. And he's a student I had in third grade many years ago. Um, so a lifetime means that the memories we create by helping kids to enjoy and be regulated for their year with us, that it does stay with them their whole life, truly. And ours. It's nice. Um, our schools use the Teachers College, Reading Writing, the Phonics Instructional, Envision, and STEM Scope. What is your familiarity of planning with these programs? Sorry, it's a really small print. I'm getting old. Yes, that is tape on my glasses. We had a little mishap. Um, and what would support might you need to gain comfort with these new programs? I feel very comfortable with the programs, um, except for the STEM scopes, which the district, it seems like there's a training Friday at Bodenham for three hours. So um, that's the only one I haven't used extensively, both as a classroom teacher and um, as an interventionist. Um, the Envision, I've taught the first grade and the kindergarten curriculum directly to students that were below benchmark. And um, the Teachers College Reading and Writing, my classroom experience is grade three, and then um, the units of study have been part of the work I've done to help uh, struggling students reach, reach those benchmarks, um, including the new phonics program um, with Mrs. Uh, Palmer Law at, at Harpsville Community School. I worked with uh, small groups that were, um, you know, that hadn't mastered the concepts as, as the curriculum moved on throughout the year. So I worked to um, double dose them with, with the earlier instruction and help them to catch up with, with the basics that they needed. Um, and I liked the tools that we use there. The phonemic awareness tool was very simple and informative. Um, and it's nice that the district is matching the phonics instruction with the literacy. Um, looking at number four, what does good teamwork mean to you? What supports would you need from your team to be successful in this position? Um, good teamwork to me uh, means working together to um, share the load, to um, be supportive of each other in what, you know, can be stressful, exhausting work, um, and in what can be long years, as uh, we've all experienced, um, but helping to keep a positive attitude, uh, helping to keep a sense of humor and a sense of child development, and really doing what's right for kids in I honest, like I said, I, I don't mean to belabor it, but I really couldn't think of a group of teachers that are more aware of what kids need than the kindergarten team at Woodside. And I think um, I would add something um, that would also enrich that, the values that I know you hold as teachers um, in how you accept students, how you accept and do what's right for students and families, and uh, just the empathy and love, frankly, that um, I've witnessed you showing over the years and compassion and um, common sense towards five-year-old, six-year-old, four-year-old sometimes, um, human beings and, and what they need. Um, there's a real uh, deep understanding of child development on that, that uh, team that um, I think I would both um, emulate and enhance um, to make a, a great year for the kids and for us. So being a, t a great team member means being present and being consistent. And um, I guess one thing that I have grown into more and continue to grow into is um, it's more about what we do than about what we say. And, and I see that work ethic in, um, in the kindergarten team. And it's one of my personal 
goals is to be more about what we do than what than what we say that, that our actions and our daily work really define um, who we are I'd love to be teammates with you guys it honestly would feel like coming home to coming home to me um, it, and sorry looking at my phone not checking Facebook I'm trying to find the next question um, I feel like we're so well known to each other. I think we'd be an amazing team for uh, for for the community and for each other. I think we'd have good coffee, good lunches, great laughs, um, and good support when we need it. That would be incredible, and I'm ready to be in one place that is. Um, very close to my home and would consume very few fossil fuels and which is becoming more and more important um, to me as time goes on um, and provides the stability for EJ um, that has been such a key important part of our, my kids journey the past six or seven years um, so that's it's exciting to me what Describe what great classroom instruction looks like. Um, great classroom instruction. Um, I think we all know what it feels like when when classroom instruction is on point and um, nobody knows the work and um, the sweat and tears that go into helping get a group of students to a point where um, you feel that they are present to the work and um, I think that's one of my strengths is really helping students know that they're seen that they're known that they are uh, respected um, and helping students to understand what their strengths are and what they need to work on um, and also setting appropriate boundaries um, for um, for students that need to need help understanding how their um, actions impact others or impact themselves and good classroom instruction is the tip of an iceberg and and the bigger iceberg is um, daily work on the whole child um, considering that you might have 21 different children but that you're trying to um, provide a setting that meets the needs of all those students and um, also in doing that work and I think of the response of classroom the first six six weeks of school um, preparing the kids uh, with routines and building their stamina um, you move your group into a group that is self-regulated and able to do the the work that um, is needed and good classroom instruction um, leans on the supports that are there the the curriculum has built-in supports and um, the effort put into um, planning ahead is um, paramount to making clear instruction for the students um, so that's been one of my takeaways from um, my title one work is that um, we have strong structures and curriculum to lean into and that um, we are we don't always have to reinvent the wheel um, oops i have to put my password in again um, and also knowing when students aren't ready for um, learning and um, understanding what you need to build in students to get them present to the learning environment and when other parts of their uh, developmental needs are crying out for attention it could be physical it could be social 
Um, but all the best research about brain development and learning means that we teach the whole child and we could be a powerhouse team of um, innovative, effective, high-functioning, diverse child development practice. Um, I think the four of us could be primed to um, really live what we, what I know all of us believe in our hearts about what kids need um, and what kids don't need. So that, that to me, the kind of the common sense um, child development approach that does not throw out the curriculum, that does not throw out the, um, the more aggressive learning targets, it just puts it in a greater discussion around human development for four, five, and six-year-olds in, in what is truly appropriate for each unique student and needful and growthful and that they love coming to school. What a blessing when, um, when we love coming to school and what a blessing that we can give that to students because we can. We can do that. We totally can do it. And man, do I look scruffy. I'm sorry. Um, I'm really excited about this position, but it caught me in the middle of really busy, <laughs> busy family stuff. So I apologize for my ratty appearance. Um, but then again, this is kind of, you know, what you see is what you get. So hold on a second. I'm going to enter my password again. How would your parents know that you are aware of what goes on in your class? Oops, I skipped one. I skipped six, but I'll go back to it. Um, so I guess in my work with um, harder to reach parents, harder to engage parents, or parents that haven't always felt safe with um, school and haven't felt comfortable, you know, signing up and being the volunteer and coming in, um, we can shift that. We can shift parent engagement with, with regular practices. And what I've learned is that one modality isn't enough. <laughs> there are, um, you know, I think there was a time 20 years ago when it was really phone calls that, that helped us reach out to parents or where letters from school were, um, you know, taken very seriously and read, but the parents get a lot of paper these days. And so I have practiced uh, multiple modalities with, with uh, communication. So, um, you know, a weekly newsletter is something that will reach some parents, uh, a um, class email or, um, individual emails or something that will quickly reach other parents and um, having a, um, an online present as your presence as your class is something that um, helps to reach most parents. And then there seems to be a couple parents on the outside of that where text is the way to hook them. So um, without creating too much work, I haven't found that it create, creates more work for my caseload, which was usually sat at around um, 40 kids when I included when I include the um, parents I reached out to who were also under uh, ed tech instruction, but under my supervision of um, as far as contacting the parents, I found just using multiple modalities um, was the best way to reach them and not just relying on one. Um, one way. Um, classroom management, this is back to number six, is one of the most important variables when setting the conditions for learning to take pl place. In your class, the print's really small. Getting old. 50 next year, by the way, March 23rd. Um, both individual student behaviors and group behaviors play a factor. How will you approach class management for your new class of kindergartners? Um, I remember the first uh, two weeks of kindergarten. They're, um, they are so 
unlike any other experience in public education that I that I've experienced in elementary education, they're wide-eyed and excited and scared, and it um, takes them a while to get warmed up to the to get their endurance up to the length of the day. Um, some of them got it right away, but um, other ones take it slow and. Um, I would lean heavily on my, um, on you, on the teaching team for um, help with the routines and the um, the SOPs and the and the visuals that would need to be created to um, create the the appropriate setting for the first six weeks of school, um, and I would lean on my responsive classroom um, training um, heavily once again to um, set create a setting where uh, routines were, were clear um, and were both um, visual and auditory for the students and for their families to understand. And this, how do you approach class management? I, I think that's it, both individual student behavior and that's so true. Um, individual student behavior is, is always a, a, a huge part of the success or, um, or distraction uh, factor for any classroom. And um, I think it's a strength of mine to deal with um, hard to reach students or, or students that, that, that can be difficult um, and disruptive. And part of it really is building that relationship with them and there's so much power in in um in students um feeling really seen and and, and appreciated um and um respected for who they are they they know it they just know it they know that you're a person who sees them and it makes all the difference in the world and it helps their parents um so the word acceptance is is really uh, important to me in my practice because um, it, it really guides um, the relationship that, that you build that helps students who can easily feel ma marginalized um, be more regulated in, in the school setting. And it's also important for me to um, remember the power of the support systems that we have in place and that kindergarten's a vital year for early identification of um, supports that students need to be successful and that families need to be successful. So the kindergarten is the biggest case management e uh, year for students because many of them are um, not don't many of them come into uh, kindergarten without the um, level of understanding of, of their needs, their strengths, their um, their patterns of behavior, their family situations, and um, kindergarten does um, the they're the point of the spear for that for for the rest of the students' lives. So it's a very important year in that sense. And that is part of um, classroom management um, is making sure that you are um, on top of what you um, observe students to be struggling with and communicating that in the way and through the channels accessing the great supports that that we are lucky to have in our school system i got to put my code in again sorry guys Let's say you were, oh my God. Let's say you were taxed with writing a how-to guide called, so you only have 11 days to prepare to start teaching your kindergarten class. What would be the three to five most important chapter headings your book would include and why? That's a great question. I wonder why you might ask that, Mr. D. Dick. Um, the, f the first chapter would be, um, Okay, I get back from my camping trip. What's next? Uh, and what's my child support schedule? Because um, it, 
would actually line up really well with when the kids transition back to Jill after our camping trip. So what that means is um, having the time to prepare the classroom physically. Um, so that would be chapter one, prepare the classroom physically for the first day of kindergarten. Um, and that would be um, something that I would thankfully have uh, ample time to do next week. And chapter two would be use your, um, use your team, your team's there to help you. <laughs> and um, I would um, really access the team to help um, piggyback on, on how they treat the first uh, two to six weeks of school. Um, I have memories of my, my time with that, and I think it would come back pretty quickly, but um, the team would be vital for that. Uh, chapter three would be um, you be, be the calm one. <laughs> There's uh, kindergarten is such an important year for families, especially if it's their first child. Um, or a child who has uh, anxiety and uh, trouble, um, you know, trouble transitioning into the school environment. It's a huge, huge transition in, in families' lives, both for the children and for the parents. And so um, my message to myself would be to just be the calm one, be the steady one, um, and develop routines that are predictable and um, shave. I think it'd be good to shave before the ice cream social. Um, and I know that, um, you know, I'm a known entity in the community, but I also know there's new families um, rolling in all the time and just helping to start building those rela relationships as soon as possible. Um, reaching out to the parents as soon as um, a decision is made by the team. And I just want to put a little caveat that I know the decision you guys make will be the best decision for the kids. And there's no personal feelings that um, I would hold at all if um, it was a different choice. Please know that to, to everybody who's watching the video. Um, I know that whatever happens will be best for, for the kids. And, and I'm very happy to still be walking into your rooms in whatever capacity I do, be it a coworker or coming to pick up your kids for, for uh, Title I work. So please know that. Um, chapter four would be called... Uh, Dear Mr. Dedek and Mrs. Hatch, there were only three kindergarten classrooms for a long time at Woodside. I don't even know if that's true. I can't remember. No, wait a minute. All right. Regardless, um, where's all my curriculum? <laughs> Please help me get it. Um, that would be chapter, um, chapter four. Help. And chapter five would be, okay, you got it. You got this. You know how to do this. Um, now it's time to do it. And it's time to talk less and do more. That's one of my new goals. Off you go. That would be chapter five. Off you go. Nine. Think of a time when your actions made an important positive difference in the life of what Morzano would call a low expectancy student. What did you do? How did the student grow and or change? And what did you learn from that experience? Um, boy, that's, I feel like low expectancy students are my specialty. Um, and it really is the work uh, I've been doing the past three years are, are students who are, are struggling. And um, I know that a vein that that follows um, through my work with students that that are low expectancy um, is helping them to 
identify their strengths. And they're always there. They're always there. It could be um, a student who struggles with reading but has really strong number sense and helping them say, you are really good with numbers. You're good with numbers, and I'm going to show you you're good with numbers. And then there was a student uh, at Harpswell I'm bringing to mind. It was a kindergartner, and he really had behavior issues that were really prohibitive. And um, reading is tough, is hard for him, but I noticed numbers, he was great with numbers. And so I just kept working with the numbers on him, numbers, numbers, and he um, outpaced his peers in, in, in that area. He outpaced his grade level when he really started at a baseline and it, um, he finished well in the green, as we say. Um, but the point isn't, for me, isn't just a time when I helped one student do that. It's a, it's a vein of practice of um, finding the strengths, helping them to understand the strengths and using that as a building block to help them um, enjoy school and feel um, good about themselves in school. And, and that covers um, so much for students. It really makes a difference. Um, and it makes as much difference when you can flip it around and when there's something that the kids, uh, that comes very hard for them and you allow them to experience small successes, even in the areas that are difficult for them. Um, because a lot of time instruction is given holistically to kids that don't have all the small building blocks they need to access that, that whole learning concept. But then when you slow it down to small chunks, they, their defenses come down and um, their behaviors decrease. And they, because they are being communicated with on their development, their, de their developmental level um, of understanding of a concept, and it decreases their anxiety and makes all the difference in the world. And it's actually the only time when growth happens. Growth doesn't happen for students. Um, not maybe trickle trickle growth does, but not significant steady growth when they um, are given instruction that's not a match to um, the, the deeper skills that are needed to access that instruction. Sorry, got to hit my password, passcode again. Okay, Th think of a time when, upon reflection, you wish you would handle the difficult situation differently. Describe this learning opportunity. How did you grow from it? Let's see, which one should I do? Which one should I pick? Um, that's a tough one. When, when I wish I had handled the situation differently. Um, I'm kind of joking, but not really. Describe the learning opportunity. How did you grow from it? I'll, I'll pick my what sticks out to me as my most recent one. I got in a little... Um, put myself in a little hot water um, in uh, Harpswell with, with, and without, you know, breaking any confidentiality, I'll just share, share my process with, uh, we had a student, a teacher um, who was going through a really uh, traumatizing, very public experience. And uh, we really rallied around this uh person um, and being the big hearted person that I am, I came up to her after school one day and people were milling around in the hallway talking to her and we had done a lot to support her um, as she was going through a really difficult thing. And I gave her a Rob Horn side to side hug and kissed her on top of the forehead and said, don't tell your husband um, in a joking manner. But to her, that wasn't okay. Um, it was uncomfortable for her. So, you know, I ended up being called out for that, um, which is, of course, very fair because, um, you know, I mis misjudged her level of comfort with me. So that was a very profound and somewhat difficult learning experience this year. But when I think about 
how I could have handled it differently um, and how I'm continuing to grow from it, it's that, um, and this is something that um, has come up in other settings as well, is that things, things can feel um, really hopeless at times, or I'm trying to get to like, what did I learn from it or how would I handle it differently? or really um, scary or um, like when it, I was really mortified when um, I learned that I had made this person feel uncomfortable and I kind of freaked out like, you know, and got defensive. And so what I wish I had um, done differently was just step back from it. And I'm not, I, 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 I'm trying to be honest with myself about this, but there's been other things that have come up that have really triggered fears in me. Like, for example, uh, we um, almost weren't able to travel because my passport was late coming in. Um, and we really kind of freaked out about it because we invested a lot of money in this Iceland uh, adventure. And it all worked out fine. And... The, the learning for me is that things can really feel um, horrible in a moment, but remembering that um, when you're in those moments that feel like many crises, um, that they're temporary. They're temporary. And the feelings that might come up for, for me don't always um, speak to the truth of the situation. I, I, it's a kind of an abstract thing I'm getting at, but it's come up again and again. And in fact, when Mary's son, Francis, was traveling to Bangkok with his friends, the same night we were leaving for Iceland, he got two customs, he opened up his passport, and it was Mary's passport. They had accidentally slipped a uh, and all their packing, they had their pack, passports had gotten mixed up. He couldn't travel. And they'd been planning this for like a year. He couldn't get on the plane. So he called us in a panic when we were, after we had dropped him off in Boston. And it really, um, it really stressed Mary out without um, sharing too much of her story. And there were a couple things that happened on our trip as well that seemed like, oh my God, what are we... And then things just, just, they worked out. You know, Francis got to Bangkok a day and a half later and he traveled by himself, which was a neat experience for him. Um, and the growth for me is um, trying to remind myself to be less reactive. Um, in the moment to, to the feelings that can be triggered in me. So um, I'm sorry I've talked for such a long time. Um, do you have any questions for us? I really don't. I just know that um, you guys are going to do what's right for the school, and I want you all to know that, um, you know, I really support that and uh, have no expectations or hard feelings about, about anything that comes of this. So um, I'll put my letter that I would introduce myself to, it says first grade, but I assume that means kindergarten parents, um, a photo of family hobbies, for example, Ooh, that could be fun. Um, so I'll put that letter, um, to you guys tomorrow morning, Thursday morning, and I hope everybody has a great day and good luck with, uh, the process and we'll see you soon. Red for Ed. Bye, everybody.